Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today before I start uh, my meditation challenge, I wanted to show you what I've been eating in the morning. Um, this is just a really simple overnight oats recipe and I normally hate oatmeal. I don't like having anything like this or anything that heavy in the morning for breakfast, but recently this has been a huge game changer. It keeps me full throughout the day and helps me eat on a much more regular schedule. And it's gluten-free, vegan, um, dairy-free obviously, so uh, that's just another added bonus. So what you need for this recipe is uh, gluten-free rolled oats. The gluten-free part is optional, of course. Um, cane sugar, organic vanilla extract, uh, unsweetened almond milk, cinnamon, um, and then fruit if you'd like and organic maple syrup as well so it's really easy you pretty much just pour in two cups of oats add in about a cup and a half of your milk of choice you can use something with dairy if you want add in um, some vanilla cinnamon and maple syrup I honestly just eyeball it but I will link specific amounts in the description below if you're curious um, and it's perfect I just put some bananas or some fresh berries on top in the morning sometimes drizzle on a little bit of extra maple syrup if I'm feeling it and I'll also microwave the oatmeal as well and then add the fresh berries on top after and it is so delicious it's so fast it's something that I could take to work with me if I don't have time to eat breakfast um, at home but it's still something that is nutritious healthy and it just keeps me on schedule so I'd highly recommend so it is day one of my meditating it is a thursday and as you can see in this clip um, i'm definitely moving around a lot something that i noticed is just sitting down for that long and sitting down like in that position not in a chair or anything was like really painful and I was I held a lot more pain in like my hips and back than I really thought so that was something that I had to get used to and instead of just suffering through the pain I decided that it'd be okay to move around and stretch while I was meditating so it's not necessarily super traditional but at the same time um, the main key was just letting go of my thoughts and just observing them as they came through so um, even though I did have thoughts coming through my head um, I didn't get too concerned with how much time had gone by or anything like that instead it was more just like oh I have this to do today or oh I need to add this to my grocery list like really basic simple stuff but instead of um, reaching for my notebook or reaching for my phone like I normally would do to write everything down I just kind of let the thought be observed and I let it go um, and I didn't really think about it after I let it leave my mind and that was something that I really had missed doing and that I hadn't just sat down and let my thoughts go in a, in a long time. So that was something that I really appreciated on day one. It is day two, which is Friday, and something that I'm noticing today is that it is much easier to just tap into kind of my meditation state, and that was something that I was really used to when I was meditating every single morning, um, and sometimes even twice a day. It was just something that I could easily get back to because it was a place mentally that I visited a lot, and today was the first day that I kind of had that feeling in a really long time, um, so I... As you can notice, I was moving a lot less and it was a lot more comforting. Um, and even though I was kind of surrounded by people, my boyfriend was there playing guitar, my dog was walking around, but it was still really easy to find peace in the moment and to find that meditative space. Um, and I almost found it more peaceful to have a little bit going on around me because nothing was begging for my attention, but at the same time, it was kind of more like what real life is like. It was how everyday feels like in my household I guess and so 
there was an element of just being comfortable um, and just comfort in that and so it kind of brought together the side of me that likes to you know interact obviously with um, with my life and with what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis but it also allowed me to check out of that side of myself and check back into just being more attuned with my true self um, so I hope that made sense but it was um, it was really refreshing and I wouldn't say that every single time you should meditate with other people there but um, it's good to know that you know if you can't avoid it or if it's just what you have to deal with that it's totally possible to do Today is day three, my third day of meditation, but it is actually Sunday night, um, so unfortunately I skipped yesterday. I was out and about and um, honestly just didn't have time to film it, <laughs> so um, I kind of forgot and I was exhausted by the time I got home, so I pretty much just passed out and today I've been a little bit more focused on just self-care and getting myself prepared and together for the next week, um, so I decided to... Uh, go back to meditating, thankfully. Um, so it was really nice because I took the break on Saturday that was kind of unintentional. I was able to really miss it and like look forward to it because I knew I was doing this challenge and it allowed me to think of it more as self-care instead of like, oh, I'm filming this or oh, I'm challenging myself to do this so I just have to sit down and do it for 20 minutes. Like it felt like something that I was genuinely looking forward to and wanted to kind of plan into my day. Um, I noticed it was a little bit more difficult to sit still and to get into that meditative space after taking even one day off and that's really what makes me want to make sure that I can do this every single day and on a more consistent basis. Um, but it was still one of my most favorite sessions just because of, you know, the lights and I took some time to set it up like I was saying and I put on a candle and I just really built the space for, um, something that would be really relaxing and would kind of allow me to practice it like I was saying as a form of self-care um, instead of feeling like it's an obligation. So um, if you kind of are reluctant to meditating then I would really recommend just setting up a space that makes you want to be there and makes you feel really comfortable because that makes a huge difference. I started the challenge on Thursday, last Thursday, and it has been crazy. So basically we found mice in the apartment. I've been living at my boyfriend's parents' house for this week. I haven't been going to work this week because we've been trying to figure out a time to coordinate between the exterminator and the landlord, and it's kind of been a total nightmare. So um, I'm not in my home. I'm not in anywhere that's comfortable um, or where I normally am, so it's been a little bit harder to film and to... Um, just find a time and a space uh, to meditate but um, it kind of grew my appreciation for it because with everything going on it's a little bit harder to be at peace with everything especially when you're in a stressful time in your life but it's so such a good reminder to not give up when life acts out on you um, and it's a great way to remember that you can always find a little bit of time so it's always okay to skip a day if you need to but um, you know, it's really about doing what you need to do to preserve mindfulness. It's really important not to approach meditating with a sense of guilt and obligation um, because that'll never make it feel good and it'll never be something that you want to return to. But if you make it dreamy and desirable and create a setting, like I was saying, that you like, um, and it becomes somewhere that you really enjoy being and it becomes kind of your place that you want to go back to when life becomes stressful. Um, the more that you allow yourself to explore that and to return to that place, the easier it is to find that sense of calm when life is getting really stressful or when things are just not how they normally should be. So it was a stressful time like I was saying but it was still pretty easy to meditate and that's something that I'm definitely going to remember for the future. Hey everyone, so as 
you saw, my week of meditation totally did not go perfectly or as planned, and I honestly had a huge issue with guilt, um, and I was honestly feeling like a total failure for not sticking to it. I was like, this is seven days, and even though I had a lot going on, even though I wasn't in my house, like, it's only 20 minutes, I should have been able to just get this done. The biggest lesson in all of this was learning to not hold that against myself and to not let that get in the way of what I did accomplish and what I did do. So something that I realized if I'm self-sabotaging and something that you might be doing too if you self-sabotage is basically looking at what you didn't do and focusing on the negative aspects of it rather than celebrating your accomplishments and celebrating what you did do. And so I decided to shift my perspective a little bit and I was like, you know what, even if I didn't meditate for three days out of this week and even though my challenge was kind of a fail, I still got myself to meditate 80 more minutes this week than I would have ordinarily. And that in itself is huge. 80 minutes is more than an hour of my week that I spent meditating, checking in with myself, and every single time that I sat down and did it, I felt better and better about it. It felt more like what I should be doing. So I just want to encourage you, if you're in the same boat, to just stay as mindful as possible and stay true to who you are. Don't, you know, beat yourself up for the little things. It's okay not to meditate every single day, but on the days that you don't meditate, just try and be as mindful as possible. And honestly, just that on its own can make such a big difference in your day-to-day -day life and in just your entire persona. Um, it can make you come off much more peaceful, much more put together, much more in control, and that's at the end of the day what we all want. So if you're in the same boat, if you struggle to meditate, I completely feel you as you saw in this video, but it's still important to do your best to try. Don't beat yourself up and just celebrate those small little wins and those small little successes that you have because that's what's going to get you to that next level in your life. So I hope that you enjoyed this video, recipes, and all the randomness included. I challenge you guys to do a week of meditation, so let me know how it goes. Feel free to record it and upload a video or slide into my DMs and let me know what the meditation challenge did for you. And I've been uploading a lot more recently and I plan to. I have some really exciting videos coming up, but I'm going to have them coming out in totally different times, so subscribe and ding that notification bell so you know when my next videos are coming out. But I hope that this inspired you to try something new and to branch out of your comfort zone a little bit. As always, everyone, happy healing. I'll see you in my next video.